So I'm going through the garage today and I got a lot of stuff that I just got to move and sell. I hold on to a lot of stuff. And one of the issues that I have is I keep saying is, well, if I sell this or if I move it, I might need it later. And then I'm worried about, you know, it bites me in the butt. It's like, man, I shouldn't have either thrown that out or sold it. But I got to get some stuff going, make a couple of dollars here and there and also clean out the garage a little bit. Um, looking up here, tons of fans and drives and boxes and coolers and you know a whole bunch of stuff up here bunch of motherboards up there with cpus i think they're i5 third and fourth gens but um we got to move some stuff so this one is a dell and spawn 5675 motherboard i picked this up on a used parts deal long story short um that whole computer had a roach infestation it was pretty bad they were just coming out like crazy there is a video on that just one of those things that wasn't paying attention and I missed it. I was able to bring that motherboard back around, but I thought the motherboard was bad. I went ahead and I ordered a new used old stock on eBay from um, of this motherboard, popped in the same CPU and that CPU just did not work. Fast forward, got myself a Ryzen 7 1700, popped it in and this thing's worked fantastic. And I've used it a couple of times here and there for just testing and whatnot, but I got this case that I need to move out the garage. We got some extra stuff. So we could put a computer together and make a couple of dollars and also clean out the garage. So case swapping this motherboard is really simple. Number one, you're gonna need this adapter. It's a six pin to six pin. You know, it has the small little pins and I'll just take it out and show you. But yeah, as you can see right there, you gotta convert that to this one. And once you do that, you can put your power button, your, if you want the diagnostic LED and the HDD LED in there, and it just works like normal. Other than that, 24 pin, four pin, works just like normal. Um, M.2, say does. The only other thing that doesn't work that you will lose on this is their front audio. For some reason, Dell thought it was a great idea to use a different front audio, but they kept all the USBs the same, which makes no sense. But we got a 256 gig SSD for it. This is the Ryzen 7 1700. And if you're going to do this as a case swap, you got to use the original cooler. If you use an aftermarket one, you'll just get an error saying the CPU cooler is not working. I mean, the computer will work fine. And if you could live with that little error, they have to press enter all the time. It's no big deal. This CPU cooler is actually the upgraded one. So the 5675 uses a regular AMD cooler, AM4 cooler. And then they have this beefier one. I actually found this one on the Facebook marketplace for five bucks. So I picked it up. I figured it'd be a lot better. So with all that, this thing is ready to go. Pop it in. But the issue that I'm running into is this case over here. So this case uses the whole addressable ARGB type plugins. And yeah, that's, you know, good if the motherboard had support for it, but this one doesn't. So I got on Amazon. I found this and I think this is going to solve the issue that I have. This will work. And as we all know, RGB does sell. People like that. And this is a pretty decent system. And we'll go ahead, we'll pop in the 1080, which I think which will work out pretty good. 16 gigs of DDR4. But I'm not able to use the RGB goodness on this case because like I said, it doesn't have that addressable RGB. So I got on the Amazon. I found this for $10. And well, this plugs into the addressable RGB, SATA powered. And we'll have a remote and we'll be able to control the fans and it'll work great. I actually prefer this. So I have the Be Quiet case and with the Be Quiet case, um, I use the button on the case to change the colors. I mostly like the white. I don't like using RGB software. That's just me. And also when I sell a computer, one of the things that I found that came back and always bit me in the butt was always, hey, the colors are not working. They're all wonky. And then I have to reinstall the software, talk them through it. But this... Simple. All right, so first thing we gotta do first is get this thing mounted in there. It does already have a power supply. I think it's an EVGA 750 watt. Just something I picked up on a used parts puzzle. And I mean, parts have been pretty decent lately. Not as good as they've normally been, but enough to make it worth our while. So, I did keep the uh, rear I.O. plate. You guys would be proud of me because you guys know that I typically don't have this. But I kept that. If you're doing a case swap for this Dell Inspiron 5675, 
it's standard it comes out and you can pop it in so let's do that first now for this motherboard your power switch and all that type of stuff you need to feed it up here because that's where it's going to be plugged into typically the motherboards or the pinout for it's on the bottom so you pop this up here you'll be good to go as far as the spacing for how it mounts and the mounting nothing to it just same old stuff really so let's get this in here just like so plug in our four pin for the cpu and start screwing it in now let's plug this in this is our usb like i said Nothing fancy to that, just traditional way it plugs in. We have our USB 3, that could go there, I think, maybe. Yep. Now where it says front system fan, we do have to plug it in, which we're gonna plug in all these fans, they're like uh, daisy chained together. So you do need to have that or you'll get an error. But you need front fans anyway, so. Now, as far as this little adapter right over here, I just find it easier just to plug it into the adapter and then plug it to the motherboard. So this is power LED is gonna go in the bottom. I think for the diagnostic LED, we'll just use the HDD LED, because why not? This is the reset switch, which we don't have provisions for that. I'm sure there's a way to figure it out, but I don't know. Okay, and I don't know if you can see it right there, but hopefully it's not too blurry. But we're plugging it in. Everything looks pretty good, so now let's plug in our graphics card. Which, like I said, we're just going to use a 1080. I think that will pair up pretty decent with it. Let's put this plate over here, which I really never understood the purpose of these plates. I get the concept, but I don't know. Just weirdness stuff, I guess. All right. Now I will be cleaning this stuff up. But for now, uh, we just want to get this thing running. So this is going to go right over here. There we go. This is just going to go into the SATA power. Let's go ahead and power this thing up. Ethernet, HDMI, keyboard, sure. Power you up. I think I gotta flick it and power. Awesome, RGB works. And let's just see if I have control. Yep, no need for software and I can use these RGB fans. Awesome. So now let's see if this computer boots. We're up and running, it's testing rear fan, tested the CPU fan. Let's let it do what it wants to do for now. It's kind of stuck on the rear fan, so if it does have an issue with the fact that it needs the rear fan to um, get past all this, that's easy. What we can do is we can just pop one in over here, plug it in, it's just a regular four pin fan. It doesn't require any weird dullness to it, but we can have an extra fan up there, that's fine. All right, so I guess it likes the, or it needs the rear fan. So let's find a rear fan line around here. Let's plug it in and let's see if we could get rid of that error because you don't want this popping up. I mean, it wouldn't bother me, but it might bother the next guy. All right, so everything's back up and running. It boots, we have no errors and just putting a regular four pin PWN fan. 
that rear fan error is gone. You do need to have one for the front. I didn't think you had to have one for the back, but I was mistaken on that. But that's actually not a big deal because you should have as many fans as you can put in the case. The more the merrier. So now this computer is booted up. I've installed a fresh copy of Windows 10. It's doing all the updates. And as far as the performance, I will be doing a separate video um, going over how well this Ryzen 7 1700 performs years later. There's a bunch of tests I want to do and put it through. So I'd rather do a more dedicated, thorough review of it. But for now, this thing works pretty good. And this adapter, which is really key, works fantastic. I mean, we could... We have total control of everything that we need. We don't have to have the software. And for these older motherboards that still have value, that don't have that um, RGB goodness on it, this is an option. Case swapping this 5675 is very simple. I mean, the only thing you're really gonna need, like I said, is that adapter, but they're like $10 on eBay. I had a bunch of them lying around from Optiplex projects, but everything works as it should. And like I said, you do lose the front audio, but everything else works. But you do lose that but i mean really you have it in the back you can run an adapter or something like that but i'm sure there's a way to pin it out i did try to do some uh research i didn't dive into it as deep as i normally would have but it's fine i'm not worried about that and i have found when i've done case swaps like this that is not a deal breaker just disclose it to your customers be honest and you know they'll understand if you give them a great deal they're not going to complain so case swapping a 5675 really easy the adapter for the rgb so you don't have to run the software or better yet putting it on other motherboards works really great and well cleaned up a little bit of the garage we'll be able to flip this real quick and that's always a win so comment down below let me know your thoughts concerns criticisms have you ever heard of that adapter um i'll post the link and all that stuff on the screen and down below what are your experience with them have you used them and ryzen 7 1700 years later how well do you think it will perform if you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, and as always, we'll see what we come up with next.